This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is the Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of List Building Lifestyle. Here is your host, the chief list builder himself, Mr. Igor K. Fetz. What is up, my man? JR, great to be here. Hey to all the list builders out there listening right now. I missed you. I missed you. Trust me. It's been really, really long week for me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I can't wait to, to do another episode. Yeah, you missed them. You're you're in their ears twice a week. I think they they don't have a chance to miss you, Igor. You don't give them a chance. But it's been a while since we record. What do you have in store for the list builders today? Well, you know, Jonathan, how every single successful business person, especially uh, you know millionaires, talks about how this one book changed their life, and that book is always Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Well. I would like to express my uncensored opinion and um, share why I believe that, you know, that this book is actually misleading. Not not the actual book, but the title of the book is very misleading and it causes lots and lots of failure. Wow. <laughs> You're going to tear down one of the sacred calves here. Yeah, I know. And it's one of the most, it's just, it's a bestseller. It hasn't been promoted in any way and it still sells literally hundreds of thousands of copies every year. It is uh, by far the most recommended book you know, within our space, the marketing space. Yet, you know, it's just maybe just the people misinterpreting it. I don't know, but it does cause a lot of failure. And it has to do with the fact that the title says, think and you'll grow rich, which implies that if you just think right, you will be rich. Truth of the matter is, it can't be right because you don't just sit in the corner and think a certain way and money you know, kind of falls in your lap. It just doesn't, you know, doesn't happen, right? And not to mention that's just one element, but the second element, which is, I think is a much deeper element, is the if I just mentality. You know what that means, Jonathan? Yeah, if I just had this advantage, if I just had this software, if I just had the easy button, everything would be awesome. Exactly. So in other words, you you sort of say, my success depends on this one thing. And if I just have that thing, whatever that is, the mental game or the, the software, the, the technique, the traffic source, Jonathan, I get it all the time. People reach out to me and they're like, dude, you're like the, the traffic source everyone talks about. You're my silver bullet. And we have to spend the time and explain that we're not. We can't be the silver bullet because that would imply that your success has nothing to do with you. And that is simply not true. So this whole if I just mentality is causing so many problems for people, they kind of place the reason for their success and failure outside of themselves. And they say, if I just do this, if I just think that, if I just had Igor drive traffic for me, then I'd be successful. And that, you know, creates a nation, if you will, uh, you know, it's it's a breed of dependable marketers that never get anywhere. Mm. And that's a problem. Well, well, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Is it a problem or is it an advantage for those of us that do work? Well, I guess just like anything, you can look at it from, you know, several perspectives, right? It is an advantage for you if you're different, if you recognize how wrong this thinking is. And if you think differently, if you think that your success is the sum total of your habits and you are waking up in the morning and taking action to develop the correct habits to develop yourself into the kind of person you must become in order to make the kind of money you want to make. I know that it sounds a little bit complicated, but bear with me for just a <laughs> second. So in other words, if you want to make a million dollars, you must become a person that is worth a million dollars. You must become the person that is capable of making a million dollars first before you can make that million, right? It will not land in your lap if you just have the right software, if you just think of the right product, if you just have the right marketing, because it will be the sum total of your habits, your daily habits, your daily action, as opposed to how most people think is, you know, if I just had something, you know, then I'd be successful. And that's why I think Think and Grow Rich is such a misleading title. Because again, it just simply implies that 
If you just think, you'll grow rich. If you just think this correct way, you'll grow rich. And that's where people fall. When I used to sell the high-end coaching, I used to ask people questions in the questionnaire. One of the questions we asked was, what are the three books you read you know, recently? And any time I saw anyone put in thinking grow rich, it was a bittersweet moment for me because on one hand, that's a good thing. That's actually one of the books you want to read to become successful because it lays down the 13 principles every single millionaire and billionaire okay, lives by. But at the same time, it is easily misinterpreted by the newbies. And it is made into this metaphysical Bible that basically says, okay, so now that I'm aware of the principle of the mastermind, I'm going to be rich. Yeah, that's going to happen. I just, I just have to think <laughs> about my mastermind and that's going to happen. I'm just going to, you know, take a, you know, kick back and, and think about masterminding with the greatest minds out there. Maybe I'll even imagine myself masterminding with Lincoln and Washington, just like Napoleon Hill did. And, you know, something will happen that will make me rich. Well, wake up. You know, it's not going to happen. So that's why, again, I decided that it's worth devoting a full episode to alerting you, list builders, to this idea, to this trap you might be falling into. Because if you are finding yourself thinking all the right thoughts, yet results don't show up, then you're probably doing this. You're probably believing in if I just principle. So Igor, you're about to lose respect for me as are all the list builders. I've never read Think and Grow Rich, even though I'm pretty what? sure I have a Cut copy Cut the recording. Somewhere. Stop it. I'm leaving. I'm No, I, I need another person to do the podcast with. Right now, I want everyone to know I do not associate with JR. Uh, <laughs> except for the other, you know, 35, 40, 50 episodes we've done. But uh, let's, let's, let's talk about this for a second. So I, I'm coming from a brand new mind who has never read it. How is it that it's being misinterpreted? Because I'm sure inside the book, it doesn't say just think, does it? Well, but it doesn't say go work either. You know, what the book is, is simply an information resource which educates you about how millionaires think. Because Napoleon Hill was hired by Andrew Carnegie to go and interview all these uh, millionaires. He, he helped him set up the interviews with some of the richest people on the planet at the time. You know, with industrialists, with, you know, people who were just banking massive amounts of money. I'm talking the Elon Musks, the Donald Trumps, and the, I don't know, the TV magnet, you know, like the media magnet, uh, moguls of the world Bill today. Gates, yeah, 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 yeah. All these The guys. Clintons. Exactly. So imagine, <laughs> you know, you going and interviewing all these people. And, you know, when he sat down, he wanted to find out how they think. And that's a really good thing to do if you want to become rich, right? You want to study other people who are extremely successful because they give you clues to how to operate your life, how to operate your day-to-day -day in order to make lots and lots of money. However, what Napoleon Hill cannot transfer through that book is the actions these people had to take along the way because they operated in those times. There were circumstances they leveraged. There were opportunities they you know, jumped on and wasn't just their thinking. It wasn't just one thing. It was the sum total of their habits that led to them becoming billionaires. So is this sort of like the, the secret where you're just wishing for good things to happen? Or, or maybe people are taking it like the secret where they're, they're thinking it's just that alone that is going to get them the results? Well, it wasn't designed to be the secret. It wasn't designed to be a metaphysical kind of thing. It wasn't designed to trick you into believing that you can just think a certain way and you'll be rich. But that's how people interpret it because, well, let's face it, everyone wants to believe whatever they want to believe. Oftentimes when I have a conversation with a client and I think I'm saying something, you know, one thing and, and, and they hear something completely different. So I could spend 30 minutes talking about the marketing strategy that I want them to take, you know, the, the marketing strategies that I implement in my business and how they can implement, the, you know, these strategies in their business. And at the end of the call, I get something like, okay, so you're saying I should keep buying your traffic, you know, and, and it's so frustrating because you can't really fix that. It's, you know, the person has to fix it for themselves first. So when it comes to thinking real rich, you should definitely read it. You should definitely read it. You should definitely, you know, keep notes on all the 13 principles. They're really, really powerful. But every single principle has to be backed up by massive, massive amounts of day-to-day -day action and habits. Habits that force you outside of your comfort zone. Habits that require you to step outside into the marketplace. Habits that go beyond 
the thinking part. Now, of course, I recognize that thinking is probably the most difficult part of it all. The mental game is about 80% of your success. And I honestly believe that. I believe that your success is A, internal, and B, it's 80% your mind game, your inner game. Yet, at the same time, you have to take some physical action as well in order to turn these thoughts and ideas into actual earnings. You have to get onto the marketplace and do something and then put some offers out there and put yourself out there in order for the marketplace to reward you with income. Man, I feel like there's an opportunity for Igor to create a new book, Do and Grow Rich, part two of this thing. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm, you know, you gotta, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and copyright this because someone's going to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> so then give us some ideas how you would improve it, how you could actually... Or our listeners, because you already get it, but how our listeners could take what they get from the book and then actually put it into action. Well, the first thing that I would do is I would probably change the title and um, I would probably do what Dan Kennedy suggested to do because I, he was the first person I've ever heard talk about, you know, Napoleon Hill being broke, oh, right? Yeah. So the guy who wrote the Bible for millionaires died broke and was rich for a very brief period of his life because he wrote this book. He never succeeded in business and he failed many, many times and he lost all his wealth and he was bailed out by, uh, by W. Clement Stone at the end of his rope and who hired him to train his salespeople. And he basically died without having anything to his name. So I would change the title again, just like Dan Kennedy recommends. And you know, you guys know I'm a big Dan Kennedy fanboy. So whatever you can find by Dan Kennedy, get it. He actually gives you practical advice on how to get rich. I would change the title to how to think to grow rich. Okay. So it's different to just thinking and growing rich. So how to think to grow rich. And I wouldn't change the book. I wouldn't go as far as changing the book. What I would do, though, is I would pay closer attention to the examples and the stories that Napoleon Hill describes in the book than to the principles themselves. For example, there is, I remember one story he, he tells about the creation of the shopping cart, because there used to be a time where people went to the you know, to those uh, grocery stores and they didn't have anything to drive around with to put the groceries in. So the average customer value was really, really low because they could only carry so much. But then someone figured it out and they created the shopping cart and bam, they, they became rich. So they spotted an opportunity. They had a, an idea how to fix the problem that the marketplace was suffering from, that the people were suffering from. And he supplied that solution to the people and became a millionaire. So that is a way, a way more effective way to study the book and to leverage it to become rich than to just read about the principles that Napoleon Hill describes. Because what this example gives you is a very specific idea about what to look for, right? So if you get outside right now and you just start observing people and the kind of problems they experience on the day-to-day -day basis, you can say, okay, so I spotted these 10 problems that my friends and families you know, complain about all the time. So if I can fit, you know, there's a good chance now that, the, that there's other families that experience the same problem. And if I can fix this problem using a gadget or a doohickey or, you know, a software or whatever else, right, that I have to create to fix that problem, and I, and I can fill that gap and I can solve that problem for the people, it's likely that these people will pay lots of money for me to do it. That's one of the things, Igor, that, that I have found in being an entrepreneur which is missing in most people is is the problem solving, right? And usually a, a good product, a good service comes from you or me having a problem, making a solution to solve our problem, and then figuring out, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of other people with this problem. They would probably pay for this. Oh yeah, uh, I can I can you know circle back to at least eight products I created this way. In fact, I became a traffic provider, a sort of traffic agency because of that, because I realized that that's one of the biggest problems that people have in this business, that getting targeted visitors to their pages. And I'm like, okay, well, if I know how to do it and I know how to do it well, then I might as well help other people do it. And then that, you know, kind of, kind of blew up, you know, and this demand in the marketplace. Uh, and it's actually an evergreen demand too. Like if you know of a traffic source and you can leverage it and you can offer it to other people, you, you're going to be successful because uh, offering traffic services and offering any other type of services that, that solve evergreen problems for online businesses is always going to be in demand, right? Because some problems are always there. Like let's just, you know, let's just, you know, step away from the online world for a sec. Let's just do offline. Yes. 
food, electricity, you know, insurance, whatever. Like there's so many things a person needs on a day-to-day basis that it's really not that difficult to figure out which problem you want to solve. So again, circling back to Think and Grow Rich, the examples that Napoleon Hill provides in the book are way more valuable than the actual principles he discusses because they give you specific implementation examples and they teach you specific lessons, specific as in in the real world that allow you to say, okay, let, how can I model this into today's world, to the offline marketplace, to the online marketplace? How can I model this behavior, not just the principle, but the behavior into my life? Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Now I should probably go read that book and pay attention <laughs> to the examples. <laughs> so Igor, what do you have coming up for us next time, man? Well, next time I'm hosting a very special guest, He is uh, considered to be the forefather of internet marketing, Mr. Ken McCarthy. And we're going to be talking copy, salesmanship, marketing, trust building, and lots and lots of good stuff. So I'm really excited to have you guys hear it and share your thoughts with me by messaging me on Facebook. Wow, that's a good one. Ken is always fun. So that is a wrap for another edition of List Building Lifestyle. Thank you, List Builders, for tuning in. And we will be back in your earbuds next time. Thank you for listening to the List Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.